Sisters. I'm Evan. And I'm Tori. It's a new semester and we've got so much more to show to you in season 2031 of Sneak Peek. Starting off tonight, we'll take a look at the Oscar nominations hosted by Melody. After that, Sneak Peek will talk Mean Girls was Mean Girls. Was the movie musical fetch or was it never meant to happen? Next, Anna Kay and Sydney will cut the gossip and take their differences into the ring for the ultimate Iron Claw Smackdown. Finally, some sneak peekers will share their thoughts on the rom-com Anyone But You. We're excited to get this show started. So stay tuned for an episode you won't miss. Last Friday, Universal Pictures released the first trailer for Monkey Man, the directorial debut of Oscar-nominated actor Dev Patel. Patel, best known for his work in films such as Lion and Slim Down Millionaire, stars as an underground fighter known for wearing a gorilla mask who seeks revenge against a group of sinister elites who connects to his childhood. While the project was initially picked up by Netflix for streaming, the film is now being distributed theatrically by Jordan Peele's Monkey Paw Productions through Universal Pictures. The film is set to release later this year on April 5th. Additionally, Focus Features announced on the same day that they plan to release a Frel Williams biopic with an unusual twist later this year. The film, titled Piece by Piece, portrays Williams' life through the use of Lego animation, with Morgan Neville directing. According to Neville, Williams approached him with the concept nearly five years ago, wanting to tell his story in a way that would set his audience imaginations free. This film is scheduled to release in theaters on October 11th of this year. In other news, the Nielsen Media Research Firm released their annual report on audience viewership on Monday on streaming platforms. Nielsen's data includes the top 10 acquired and original films and uh, television series on streaming according to Minutes Watched. Now, according to the report, the most streamed show of 2023 was the 2011 legal drama Suits, which was added to Netflix last August. Surprisingly, not a single streaming original series managed to break into Nielsen's top 10 series streamed in 2023. Ted Lasso, an Apple TV Plus original, had the highest year shift of any streaming original with 16.9 billion minutes streamed. Now, while 16.9 billion may sound like a lot, the series still fell short nearly 6 billion minutes of watch time from the number 10 show on Nielsen's list, Supernatural. As streamers continue to fight for viewership and, then, and revenue on their uh, pl uh, platforms, the data seems to indicate that the most successful series come from legacy content rather than made-for-streaming originals. That's all from us. Now here's Brandon, Samia, and Gavin with their thoughts on the nominations for the 2024 Academy Awards. Take it away, y'all. What's up? I'm Melody, and we're here in the Sneak Peek studio to talk about the Oscar nominations that released last week. We're going to have some of our most high-profile sneak peekers talk about the subject. All right, so let's call one of them to the stage right now. Come on up, Samia. Hey, how are you doing today? I'm fine, thank you. How are you? I'm good. So let's talk Oscars. What are the worst snubs? Hmm. Honestly, I think given how stacked the lineup of films were for 2023, I think it was near impossible to avoid snubs. But with that being said, there were a lot of films that were nominated for so many Oscars, but missed in places where I think they should have been nominated. Like take Zone of Interest, for example, got so many nominations, but somehow missed score, which was really crazy to me because the score made up a lot of like the intensity of the film and it really contributed to what made the film so effective. So I was really surprised that it missed that. Also, Killers of the Flower Moon got so many nominations, but somehow missed adapted screenplay, which I did not understand because a lot of, a lot of what made that movie so good was the fact that they diverted from the point of view from the original book. So I don't know why they made those choices, but I understand a lot of the choices they made like a lot of people said Barbie was snubbed but I think it got too many nominations wow 
A little bit of a hot take. And on that note, I mean, you were talking about how some movies got nominated for categories that, I mean, that didn't get nominated for categories that you think should have gotten nominated. So what categories do you think were the most, like, correct? And what categories do you think were the most far off? Hmm. I would say Best Animated Feature was incredibly strong this year. I'm really happy Boy and the Heron made it, Across the Spider-Verse, again, like, great films. I was also really happy that Nimona made it, given the way that Disney almost, like, prevented that film from being released. And then it got nominated over a lot of Disney films. Wish. Yeah. (laughs) I didn't see it. I don't intend on it. Sorry, everybody. (laughs) Yeah, and I mean, speaking of snubs, Once Upon a Studio did not get in the short film category. That was really surprising to me. But anyway, thank you, Samia. Let's go ahead and bring up our next guest. Come on in, Gavin. Hey, Melody. Hey, what's up? How are you doing? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm doing good. So, snubs? Snubs. Um... I do I do have to agree with Samia. This was a very packed year for movies, and I think that you could look to countless movies for snubs, but there were a few in particular that I was really, really hoping would win at least some kind of nomination. Um, Asteroid City was a big one that I felt was kind of looked over, especially in you know production design, original song, uh, costume, and makeup. I also, I thought that the Iron Claw absolutely you know had a very strong awards chance and it just kind of fell in sort of an unfortunate timing with a24 going all in on uh, past lives and zone of interest um but i think in another year we would have seen probably a lot more for that one um i also i really wish that we saw a nomination for um andrew scott for all of us strangers i thought Mm. his performance in that movie was fantastic um but again i understand with the categories being as loaded as they are it's just impossible to fit everyone yeah and Talking about loaded categories, what category do you think is the most competitive this year? That is a great question. I think that we are seeing a lot of really competitive categories. I think that the run for Best Adapted Screenplay is one that is um, pretty up in the air with Oppenheimer, Barbie, Poor Things. Uh, You know, we're seeing, I would even argue, Best Supporting Actor is one that's had a very um, tight race. Um, Yeah, there's been a lot of surprises, I think, in the nominees. Um, I don't think a lot of people were expecting Ryan Gosling to break through the the group of nominees. Um, And on that note, I do wish Charles Melton was also included. Uh, But, you know, we also have strong roles from Mark Ruffalo, Robert Downey Jr., you know, just a lot of talent in that category. And I'm really not sure where it's going to end up. Yeah. I guess we'll have to wait until the Oscars. Yeah. Well, thank you, Gavin. I'm going to kick you out and bring it, bring out the next guest. That was the wrong way, but it's okay. All right. Come on, Brandon. Hey, how are you doing? Hey, fantastic. I'm so excited to be here tonight. I'm so excited to have you. So, you know the drill. What are the worst snubs? Well, when it comes to worst snubs, there's one big movie that really comes to mind for me, and that is May, December. Literally... I mean, at least the Oscars had the decency to give May, December one nomination for um, original screenplay. But I mean, come on. Uh, Natalie Portman's performance, Julianne Moore's performance, and of course, um, Twitter's favorite supporting actor, uh, Charles Melton, also had a fantastic performance in that movie. And I just think it's crazy that none of them got in. And I mean, moving past the performances, which, again, cannot overstate how incredible those performances were, you have the score for the movie, which I just found was fantastic. No, yeah, it's so fun. It's so, like, wildly dramatic and over the top. And it's just, it's a really bold choice. And I think we should be rewarding these kinds of artistic, bold um, gambles and not... I don't know. I mean, there were a lot of really good scores this year. Um, I mean, I'm still mad that Boy in the Heron didn't get a mention, but, you know, it's whatever. It's forgiven. So thank you so much, Brandon, for joining us. We're going to have to cut our time short, but thank you again. And thank you guys for tuning in. Bye. (laughs) Hey, Evan, have you seen the new Mean Girls musical yet? Uh, No, I'm not into musicals. Don't say that around the plastics. Who are the plastics? They're sneak peek royalty. And if you talk badly about Mean Girls, they'll write your name in the burn book. Well, I wouldn't want that. Let's go over to Anna, Molly, Allie to to hear how great um, the Mean Girls movie was. Take it away, girls. 
Hey sneak peekers, it's Karen Smith and I'm like dying to tell you about the new Mean Girls musical with the plastics. Wait, we're not like actually dying. At least, I hope not. Okay, let's take it to Damien and Janice and they'll be telling you all about the Mean Girls musical and then we'll meet the plastics. Hey sneak peekers. Wait, why are we talking to University of Texas students? They don't even go here. Damien, be nice. We have to tell them about Mean Girls, which, you know, is definitely not a musical. You know, many people went to the film unaware that this would be a musical iteration, which blows my mind. I mean, look at the news, mm -hmm. people. Even Glenn Coco reads the news, so you have no excuse. I think the whiplash of learning you're watching well-known early 2000s movie characters burst into song for two hours caused some backlash, but in my opinion, these people should have known what they were getting themselves into. I mean, what do I know? I didn't see it. I listened to the musical, though, but I thought some of the lyrics were rather surface level. But have you listened to World Burn? I was ready to let Regina burn my world at the Renee Rapp's power ballad. No, don't get me wrong. Renee Rapp is incredibly talented. Look, I'd rather be me, but I think the casting was excellent. Jaquel Spivy, Ali Cravalho. See what happens when you cast people who can actually sing? All right, I guess we'll let the plastics talk. Oh God, don't look Regina in the eyes. Or her hair. Excuse you? Sit down, loser. We're reviewing the new Mean Girls movie. You can't sit with us! I'm oh, sorry. I don't know where that came from. Seriously, sit down. Have you seen the new Mean Girls? Yeah. You have? Shut up. Shut up. I... I didn't say anything. That is, like, so interesting. It was really good. Yeah, I, I really liked it. So you agree? What? You thought it was, like, really good. Well, yeah. I know it wasn't popular among many, but I truly loved it. The film was a great nod to an iconic film 20 years later, while taking a fresh and new take at the same time. I'm a big fan of the musical, and I think the film really held up. While the songs were less strong, it's a movie. I agree with the consensus that the costumes were a little weak. I mean, I mainly noticed this with Regina. I would have loved to see her in some Chanel, but alas, I am still a love obsessed with Mean Girls and Renee, plus Lindsay at the end hosting the math competition. Looks like looking in a mirror. Oh my god, yes. I mean, I might be a little biased, but Renee obviously carried. I mean, she's just like me. Of course she would. I loved the Broadway show, but the film version had a different energy to it. The jokes were very Gen Z-ified, and I can't believe Regina wore black. But there were so many references to the old film that I just loved. And I was shocked that they changed Jingle Bell Rock. If I wasn't already a Die Hard fan, I wouldn't have noticed some of the changes. But props to Damien and Janice, who killed it during the revenge party sequence, and Regina's haunting ballad, When Someone Gets Hurt, had my jaw on the floor. I think we all need to take a second to thank our Lord and Savior really quick. God? No, Tina Fey, duh. I'm so glad she was heavily involved with the Broadway iteration on the stage and the movie screen. Faye clearly listened to fans over the past 20 years, and she heard the girlies and gave us everything we wanted and more, like surprise camos. Um, Karen, I think you mean cameos. No, Regina, it's like camouflage. Anyway, cameos, like T Tim Meadows and Tina Fey reprising their roles and finally confirming Principal Duval and Miss Norbury are a couple. Don't even get me started on Lindsay Lohan returning. And who can't love the inclusion of many previous Broadway mean girls, like Ashley Park as the high school French teacher, and of course the Queen Bee Renee Rapp, stealing the show, making her much anticipated return to the burning world of Regina George. It was so fetch. I'm obsessed with the cast. Filling in the Jimmy Choo's of Regina George and the converse of Katie Heron is no easy task, but Renee Rapp was born to be Regina George. I mean, Rachel McAdams sure thinks so after introducing her recent SNL performance. Angry Rice brought the same naive, easily influenced nature as Katie as Lindsay Lohan did. And you know who else was fetch? Avantika Vandenap, whose silly Karen and B.B. Woods perfect iteration of Gretchen. Finding two people with strong chemistry to play Janice and Damien could make, could make or break this film. And Faye knocked it out the park with Ali Carvalho and Jaquel Spivy, who perfectly portrayed the duo. And lastly, thank you for Tina for casting Chris Briney for the Team Conrad girlies. <laughs> What's fetch? Oh, it's like slang. From an old movie? And who's Conrad? Don't worry about it. Well, I think I've heard you guys yap for way too long. 
Tell us what you think of the new Mean Girls movie in the Burn Book or on our socials at Sneak Peek TV. Get this over with Karen. Oh, sorry. I think I'm supposed to tell Sneak Peekers bye. Bye. I don't know about you, but after that Mean Girls review, I could use a change of pace. Yeah, less talking, more fighting. Anna Kay and Sydney are here to duke it out over Iron Claw. Let's, Let's get, get ready, ready to rumble! Hello, speakers. In this corner, we have Anna slay the competition. And in this corner, we have Sydney Breaker. Today, we are having the ultimate WWE SmackDown for the title of the Iron Claw Yes. I have trained my fighters to have the ultimate mental fortitude of the film Iron Claw. And the film was released this past December and features the story of Texas natives, the Von Erich family. The film is directed by Sean Durkin and stars Zac Efron, Jeremy Allen White, Harris Dickinson, Stanley Simmons, and the stunning Lily James. The Von Erich family is known for their talents in the ring, but have an alleged curse that ultimately leads to tragedy. The film remarkably balances action in the ring with heart-wrenching familial drama, which we will see tonight. Round one will be a character breakdown. Let's bring back the fighters. Character breakdowns are incredible, but we all know why we originally went to the theaters, and that's to determine who is the hottest brother! I may not have known his name to begin with, but for me, I'll be fighting on behalf of David. David Smooth talking on the mic really stole the show from me. If you know me, you know I love nothing more than a short king. Woo! And there is no shorter king than Jeremy Allen White, the one, the only, Karen Von Erich! Enough yapping! Hit each other! Yeah! Oh, Jeremy Allen White, he's so pretty! I love his long blonde hair that was blue in the brain when he beat up the other one. Like, I'm gonna beat you up! I don't think so anymore! Alright, enough, enough, enough! enough. Those were some pretty solid arguments on both sides, but personally for me, it's Lily James. The winner of round one is Coach Aaron. Now on to round two. It's the most shocking part of the film. Fighters, let's go. Most shocking part of the film to me, huh? Was the way the film portrayed brotherhood in such a beautiful and artistic way. It was hard to hate anyone. To me, it was how the tragedy unfolded. They managed to they managed to portray such a heartbreaking story without drowning the viewers in sorrow, similarly, similarly to how I'll... All sorrow. right, sorrow tomorrow, get to smacking. Let's start round two, again! Sorrow, my butt, this is the Little Women for Boys! This is the Titanic for Men! <laughs> I'm just gonna let that go on for a second. All right, enough, 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 let's finally put this to rest. The winner of this next round may have shed the most tears during the film, but will leave this film with even more. AK, Sydney, who cried more? Smackdown! It was me. I cried in the theater and at the gas station while pumping gas on the way home. I filled up my extra large AMC A-list half-price cup. <laughs> Thank you, A-list! Wow, and the winner of the Iron Claudius title is Lily James in that sweet southern twang. <laughs> Good night, y'all. With February around the corner, I'm ready to watch some Valentine's rom-coms. Got any recommendations? I actually do not, but I know people that do. Angelina, Emily, Sasha, Ali, and Anna are here to share their thoughts on anyone but you. Take it away, guys. Yeah. Hey, sneak peekers. I'm Ali. I'm Angelina. I'm Emily. Uh, I'm Sasha Faye. <laughs> and I'm Anna. And today we're going to be talking about the newest rom-com that came out over the holidays, Anyone But You. Yeah, so we kind of want to hear everybody's general thoughts about the film to start off with. What did y'all think? So, I definitely enjoyed watching it, but that's all I'm going to say. <laughs> <laughs> I think for the first half, I was like very secondhand embarrassment, but then it got funny. It was like, it was funny. Like, it was a good laugh. Um, I, I think uh, it was definitely like, one of the movies, but like I had a good time. <laughs> not not in a bad a not in a bad way, but I, I had a good time. I, yeah. I 
I liked it. I was excited. I'm a rom-com girly, and so I knew it wasn't going to be, like, cinema, but yeah. I was really excited to see it, and I'm I'm a, a Glenn Powell fan. I love that mm-hmm. man, so yeah. Glenn, if you're watching this, I love you. Glenn, please, please. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I disagree with you, Allie. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I was excited for this to begin with. We both were. Oh, we've been I, waiting. I mean, we've been talking yeah. about this forever. But <laughs> I think Glenn Powell was really funny in it. I thought the chemistry was great. It was fun. It was a fun watch. Yeah. It was yeah. A fun watch. And with the chemistry, Angelina and I have been, like, obsessing over if they were a thing or not yeah. for about a year now. So do you guys think that was real? Like, yes. that they were, 100%. like, yes. Mm, yes. seeing each other? Yeah? I think the chemistry was better in real life than in the movie. I would personally. agree. Okay. Yeah. Mm, I, see. I I don't know. I. In mm. my heart, I, I think it's a psyop or something. Or, I don't know. I, <laughs> okay, I... I, I I'm not the expert. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was fake, but then when it started getting so much, like, buzz that they were like really leaning into it yes and i i kind of also think it was fake but then the one thing that convinces me he broke up with his girlfriend that in real was life. crazy timing that, that was insane that was really interesting to me yeah. but she's still with her fiance so i don't really know i know how to feel. i i don't know i feel like yeah i don't know i i think it was fake but that was crazy timing of yeah. the breakup yeah okay and then we wanted to ask did you guys like sydney sweeney in it I don't think she's a rom-com actress, okay. personally. I don't think that her acting shined as much as it did in like some of her other stuff, like Euphoria. I feel like she stood out so much in Euphoria, but here, I could definitely tell she was acting. Mm-hmm. Like, it did right. not okay. feel that mm-hmm. genuine. Yeah. What about you? I, I mean, I liked it, but I also like wasn't going into it like yeah. critically watching it, you know? Right. So like I think... I think it was fun, and I liked that she was an executive producer. Mm-hmm. I think yeah. that's what I really admired about it, because yeah. she really cared about it. Yeah, I yeah. feel like I kind of had the same, like, idea as you about, like, her in this, because I feel like in Euphoria, she stands out for, like, being a good actress, mm-hmm. and in this movie, she stood out because she was the only person that could tell was acting. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. And I was like, hey. I can see that. I, yeah. <laughs> I, I think, um, yeah, like, she's had, like, so many, like, amazing roles, like, Euphoria is one of them. I think for me, I'm, like, this is the first like role of hers I've seen that's not super like um dark and tragic and like I don't know it, it was fun getting to see her in something more lighthearted and I, I do appreciate that yeah. yeah I I agree like well when I first saw the trailer for the movie I was not convinced by her performance <laughs> yeah um but I thought it ended up being better than what mm-hmm. I expected it yeah. to be um but yeah I I really like that they're just, like, trying so hard this year to, like, bring rom-coms back. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. with the Jennifer Lawrence movie that came out in no the summer. Feelings. Yeah, No yes. Hard Feelings. Yes. And then that this one. one yeah, something. and they were all... Adver- <laughs> that one was something. crazy. Yeah. I was not expecting that beach scene. I was oh, like, me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. Um, yeah, I I like that they were both advertising it, though. Like, they were like, okay, we're going to yeah. bring rom-coms back, which yeah. is fun. Because yeah. I feel yeah. like it was, like... Just like in the dark ages for such a long yeah. time, no one wanted to watch it. In the dark ages, yeah. no one really <laughs> yeah. see that anymore. I think, I think it definitely it has like potential to be like a good like fun watch like rom com because especially with the whole like you said marketing and then like the whole like unwritten song like oh being gosh, played into funny. it like it's yeah. cute yeah. like you want to watch yeah. it and you're like yeah it's cute it's funny yeah. it's yeah it's it's okay. <laughs> I think it was just fun to see that like actors actually do enjoy being in them like I remember you and I talked about yeah. Glenn Powell was asked in an interview like last week or something like how so many actors are like oh I'm not gonna do a rom-com like those are awful like, like they look down on yeah. it think it's silly but I think he's becoming the new rom-com man yeah, yeah. Really with his man. Man. just yes. go with it that one yeah. that is but that's like entering like the rom-com hall of fame yes. oh yeah. yeah and then I yeah I just want him in every rom-com ever I think it'd be so <laughs> he's a good rom-com guy yeah. 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 Well, I think that we can end with a fun question. <laughs> Who is your ideal rom com pairing? Okay, I thought about this a little bit. The only one I was super set on was I need Jacob Elordi in a rom com, <laughs> but in his Australian accent yes. only. No more English. N- English, yeah. American, none of that. No. <laughs> and then, you know, Renee Rapp has been really popular recently. I and them together in SNL. SNL and yeah, like what the a internet. pairing that yeah. was. Crazy pairing. Yeah. That yeah. would be really good. I like that. Yeah. And I want to see Jacob in something other than Kissing Booth. I agree. Even yeah. though I love yeah. those, actually. Please. They're like a guilty pleasure. No, right? <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, I feel like 
Timothy Chalamet. Everybody loves him. Like, it makes sense. And I think after he did Wonka, he was saying, like, how he loved doing, like, kids' movies. And I know that rom-coms aren't kids' movies, but I think it's something, like, fun and, like, lighthearted. And I feel like he's great in roles like that. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like him paired with Saoirse Ronan. Um, <laughs> together in another universe, we yes. need to see it. Uh, they had two Greta movies Greta. already. Yeah, directed, directed by Greta. Greta. Yeah. Yeah. They had two yeah. movies previously where they didn't end up together, and I think that we can make this happen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm behind that one for sure. I think I want Dylan O'Brien and Zoe <laughs> Deutsch in that movie oh. that came out. Like, that was a very serious movie. Oh, you know, yeah. 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 Yeah, I know exactly which one you're But their about, yeah. chemistry, like, doing press interviews was so good, and I'm, like, kind of mad that they're not in a rom-com together. Yeah, I agree. So I want that. <laughs> Um, oh my goodness, I've not given this question a lot of thought, but I, I'd want to see Zendaya <laughs> in a rom-com. I don't know with who. Like, like, Tom Holland. Okay, yeah, yeah. That, I think that'd be really yeah. She does have that movie coming out, Challengers. Yes. It's not really oh, a yeah. club, but there is rom in Roman. there. Right there's <laughs> a rom. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I think for me, just because of the dating rumors, and, the, and also because they're both at their peak, Barry Keegan and Sabrina Carpenter. Ooh, there that was, like, would dating be really rumors, good. And they're both like at their peak. They both can act really well. <laughs> yeah. And I want to see Barry Keegan playing someone who's not absolutely insane. There we go. <laughs> like, I feel yeah. like he would be so cute in a rom-com. And like Sabrina as well. I think that'd be so cute. And I hopefully we'll see some of these and we'll be, get to talk about them again. There but you thank you so much, Sneak Peekers, for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.